Okay, we are live on the Las Vegas Triathlon Club Facebook page, and we're recording. I'm John Mercer, president of Las Vegas Track Club, co-host Bob Gamble, my partner Folks. in crime on the podcast. And we've got a special podcast tonight. We have a past president from the Las Vegas Triathlon Club. Uh, boy, I tell you, we, we, could, we could fill this 30 minutes. We're just talking about all that Shauna has done for the endurance community. And I don't know if a lot of people uh, know right off that we actually named an award after uh, Shauna because of her involvement with the endurance community has been so deep and so rich. Uh, we, we came up with the Glasser Award that we award every year. Uh, and uh, it, we are endearingly we also refer to it as the Ginger Award. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and it is really to recognize uh, you know, a member who's gone above and beyond uh, the call of duty for, for helping uh, in the endurance community. And uh, we've started that and it's really a, a great honor to be able to give that away. And it's a great honor uh, to, to have Shauna on this podcast to talk about her triathlon background and career and uh, where she is with the endurance community. So thanks Shauna for joining us. So uh, I'm gonna actually turn the mic over to Bob to do the official uh, introduction. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. And uh, as John said, we are really pleased to have Shauna Glasser with us tonight. Uh, a lot of you know Shauna, and some of you don't. We have a lot of new folks in the, in the group. Just to give you a little background on Shauna, her first triathlon was in 2007, and that's whenever she joined the Tri Club. Um, she started off being the treasurer. She was involved in the Tri Club right up right from the start. She was the treasurer when she started. She became the uh, vice president in 2013 and was at uh, the vice president until she became a president in 2015 and did that for three years through 2018 and turned it over to John. Um, one of the things that if you haven't met Shauna or you haven't had the pleasure, it, Shauna is a, a consummate athlete. And what's, what's interesting about Shauna is when you, you can get a sense of her athleticism just by standing next to her and you realize how powerful she is and graceful and you know, she's just really an amazing athlete. She, she's all around athlete. Um, she did shot put and discus in high school, uh, played volleyball. So she's been in athletics all her life. And John is probably going to tell you a little story about it. She's not only a all around athlete, she is a fierce competitor. And John has some stories about that. And uh, Shauna is a world-class triathlete. She's national champion of Athena in uh, two different distances in the, the, the three, sprint, Olympic, and yeah. middle distance, correct? Mm -hmm. So now that's, that's one thing. I'm going to tell a very, I'm going to make this as short as I can. But on the one end of the spectrum, Shauna is just an amazing athlete very athletic and, and, and she's you know, strong, powerful and graceful, but that's at one end of the spectrum. At the other end of the spectrum, people don't realize how much of, a, of an angel she is and how much of a sweetheart she is. And she doesn't even, probably doesn't even like to admit this. Uh, the very first time I ever hit the podium, uh, I got second place in my age group. And the first time I was ever on the podium, first medal I was ever going to get, and uh, I was all excited. And for the medals, they gave a beer glass with um, the, the label on it was, you know, welcome to Las Vegas. And I was crushed. <laughs> I was like devastated. I wanted a medal so bad. And it really, it really crushed me. And um, Shauna on her own went out to a trophy maker and made with my name on it, Bob Gamble, second place finish, Las Vegas Triathlon, and it came and personally delivered it to me. Oh, so, I mean, that, that just meant so much to me. It was story. just, you wouldn't, yep. you, it, it was just, it's just hard to imagine. Yep. So, like I said, she's, she's really a, an amazing individual. And um, we're going to talk to her and get a little, get to know her a little bit uh, more tonight. But we have an athlete, we have a, an, an angel and a very, uh, very compassionate and, and sweet person. And, and a mom and then doing all of this with two, two kids, raising two kids while doing triathlons. 
And um, so we're gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna turn it over to to Shauna and just ask her, how are you doing and how are, how are you training uh, these days and and what's going on in your life? But but again, welcome and thank you so much for everything you've done for the club. Thank you so much for having me. I'm with my people tonight, so I'm excited. Um, I was telling Bob that when we were talking about this beforehand, that one of the things that I, I've seen a bunch of the moms on here that are really great moms. And a thing that I haven't seen talked about is there's a lot of mom shame out there for women who are trying to raise small children. They get the, you're being selfish. Um, your kids are developmentally suffering because you're not paying the time and attention to them. I have a cat in the background. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, you know, your kids aren't as happy and healthy because you are being selfish and doing this thing triathlon. I got a lot of that when my kid, because I started when my daughter was one. Mm. Um, and I'm kind of at the tail end now. So I can tell you what it's really like out there, mom. So first of all, you're doing a great job. Oh. They will survive. <laughs> Um, there's a lot of good reasons for moms to do tries. One is you're setting big goals and your kids are watching you day in, day out, chasing this thing that is not an instant gratification thing. They're seeing, you know, you're having good days, you're having bad days, but you're staying the course and then you go for that triathlon day and you achieve your goals. So they learn that it's important to set goals and work really hard to get those things that are important. Um, being a good parent and being able to give back the energy and the passion to your kids, you kind of have to feed your own passions first. Um, because then what ultimately happens if you don't do the things that you're passionate about, you're kind of empty inside and you end up resenting the very things that you gave it up for. So you have to remember that. Um, also, it's important to let um, your kids build the relationships with other people in the family. For example, you know, when I was out and about, my kids would be spending a lot of time with my husband. And that's been great because they have a great relationship. If I got hit by a bus tomorrow, my husband could just take over. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, and, and they've gotten to know their grandparents and it's been a very special thing. And it's important to let them have those social connections and those familial connections. Um, you staying healthy, um, you'll be around longer, be able to take care of them, um, actually have energy because you're not just sedentary. Um, and when you make exercising normal in your household, they just kind of think this is normal. This is what we do. Um, you know, think about your mom. Did she have a sport or a, a passion outside of something that when you she was raising you like my mom really enjoyed tennis and I cannot think of one time where I was like you know I wish she didn't play tennis or this has impacted my development I never have thought that I've always been super supportive of whatever you know she did line dancing and, and tennis and things that I didn't you know understand but I love that she got out and did other things and she wasn't just this normal mom that you know all she had was her kids um, your kids are going to grow up and they're going to find partners in life. And I guarantee you, they're not going to be hundred percent compatible on the things that they enjoy. So you are teaching them. It's okay for somebody to have something that you don't enjoy. You support them and you love them and you let them enjoy it and, you know, get the passion out of life. Mm -hmm. Um, because studies show that relationships that people have their own hobbies are actually healthier and happier. So you're creating um, a chance for them to be healthier and happier and, and later in life. Um, and lastly, kids are around for a very short amount of time. It doesn't seem like it when you're in the trenches, but 20 years goes so fast. Um, you know, you need to have friends, you need to have hobbies, and you need to not self-destruct when you're an empty nester. So. That's why it's important. So <laughs> I love it. No, that's, that's such a great message. You know, there are so many barriers to getting into triathlon for anyone, but uh, more barriers even for women in triathlon. And that's why, you know, really there's, there's, uh, you know, the, the stats are that far fewer women participate in triathlon. So I'm curious, yeah. 
for you and your first triathlon, how did you get involved and did you have a role model that, that, uh, that, that was doing it and you said, oh, that looks like something I'd like to do? Well, triathlon was kind of, you know, the bucket list item and my aunt, you know, we all get into this by a friend saying, hey, this would be great. And so my aunt's like, I really have that on my bucket list too. Would you want to do it? And so we found this coach that did a 12 week program from couch to sprint triathlon. And uh, we thought it would be a good idea. It, the one that I did was actually held at Lake Las Vegas. It was a week after Rage that year. Rage actually was rained out and cold weather. Mm. Um, so I wouldn't have been able to do the swim anyway. But my coach at the time said the best thing for you to do before you actually do a race is go volunteer. Go sit in the transition if you can get it and you'll watch all the mistakes unfold. And sure enough, <laughs> you know, people putting their helmets on backward, <laughs> people jumping on their bikes at the mount line and not realizing you have to get some momentum to keep you up. So you just see whoop yeah. and fall over and overrunning their bike. So it took them a while to find it or, you know, just a bunch of things that you saw in transition. Um, so I, like I said, I did it at an all women's triathlon and I don't seem to too many of them anymore. Um, it was actually really nice to just be around women because like in the swim, for example, um, I touched somebody's feet cause they, I was drafting them and then they kind of stopped for some reason and I touched their feet and she poked, I'm sorry, I kicked you. And I'm like, I'm fine. Keep going. I touched you. I shouldn't have touched you. <laughs> you know, we're all nice and, and, and calm. And, um, whereas a guy would have thrown an elbow at you. Exactly. Um, so when I got there to my first triathlon, um, we actually had to get in off of a dock and all the women were scrunched up on the dock and they were putting their toes in there like, it's so cold. I can't go in till the gun goes off. And I'm like, ladies, I got to get in there because, you know, a wetsuit is designed to warm up the water between you and the wetsuit. It's not designed to stay dry till last minute. So I had to get in. So I was like, ladies, I need you to scooch. And they're like, no, no, just wait till the gun. And I'm like, I can't, or it'll, sound, it'll feel like I have an asthma attack. Cause when I get started dry like that. So I, I ran and I jumped and I cannonballed over them and I ended up getting them wet. But I'm like, I'm sorry, ladies, I gotta, I gotta do this. Oh. And so the swim went off without a hitch. Um, so I had trained for this in winter because it was January 1st to um, April. And even the week before, it was still in the 70s. Well, my race day, it was 94 degrees. Mm -hmm. So the night before, you used to have these um, race talks before, and they were mandatory. Mm -hmm. So the race director's like, drink, drink. You need to be chugging water on the bike, because if you hit that run dehydrated, you're done. And I'm like, you know, taking notes and okay, okay, because I'm scared because I, I haven't, I haven't raced in the heat. And so on my bike, I am pounding back water. I am doing good. I am the queen of this. <laughs> which, which distance is this now? That, this is the sprint. This is a sprint. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm a total planner. So yeah. these other interviews that you've been doing about these people who just get in there and, and throw caution to the wind. I don't even understand. <laughs> that gives me the papers. I don't. So my triathlon goal was to do a five-year plan, first year sprints, second year Olympics, third halves, fourth, I wanted to do a relay where I did the bike and the swim and had my husband do the run. And then the, the fifth year I was doing the full Monte. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so I'm, I'm pounding all the, the water on the bike and I get to T2, I start running. And it was the first time that my brain and my body did not agree. I, I yeah. ran about an eighth of a mile and I started walking and my brain is like, what is going on? We're running this and go, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and my, and have you ever kind of walked with a sparklets bottle that's half full and it's, mm -hmm. yeah, that was my gut because I had taken in so much water. So I just, I was like, okay, body, you're, you're getting two street, street light posts. And you're going to get together and then we're going to start running again because yeah. we're not doing this. We're running. So I walk the two, I start running again and a couple street lights down, I'm walking again. And so I kind of did this walk run thing 
I come into the finish. I was going to sprint. It was going to be beautiful. I was going to get these wonderful photos, you know, oh, yeah. and I, I basically just barely got past the finish line. <laughs> so um, when it was done, I looked for a tree with some shade. I laid down. They started doing the awards. And so I'm like, I'm listening to the overalls and, you know, they always just sound like ridiculous times, you know, like five minutes and 37 seconds for, and you're like, oh God, you know, <laughs> you're happy for him. But at the same time, you're like, that person's not human. And then, so I'm laying under this tree and it gets to my division and my, my age. And they're like third, second, first, Shauna Glasser. And I, oh. I, I sit up. <laughs> And I look for somebody else named Shauna Glasser because <laughs> uh -huh. I'm like, surely it couldn't be me. And so I go up and I get my award and yeah. And then, so I, I was just going to do one and my aunt's like, I'm, I'm one and done. And she, she's true to her word. 13 years later, she's only done the one yeah. and me, I'm the total triathlete. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, if I would have ran that, cause I was actually a one by seven minutes. So I thought I could have maybe won by 13 minutes. Oh, there you that. go. The competitor <laughs> so I'm like, I got to do that again, just oh, to wow. see if I could dial that part in. <laughs> I love it. That, that's better than you. All right. So even thinking back, so, you know, obviously the awards are, you know, that's fantastic. And really, you know, that, 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 it, that's encouraging. But what was it like when you hit that finish line? I know you said you were still, you know, sloshing around with water, but do you remember <laughs> that feeling of, of that first finish? Yeah, it just, it's pretty great. Just the, the sense of accomplishment. And I spent 12 long weeks, you know, yeah. I, I didn't actually know how to freestyle swim when I started. So kind of that all came together and just, yeah, just the culmination of everything and it all comes together and you're like, okay, I did all right. I did all right. Shauna, do you, do you realize how rare that is what you just said about uh, when you started this, your first triathlon, the swim went off without a hitch. You, yeah. realize, <laughs> you realize how often that happens? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. I, so that, I, uh, that was destiny. I, I didn't know how to freestyle, but I loved the water. So like I could be a dog paddle champion. Like I, I could get around in the water and I never was afraid of it. So at least I had that on my side. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. You said, that, and I agree with you. I haven't seen as many women triathlons, especially here in, in our area. But yeah. I've talked with several people who have done uh, one of those uh, uh, women triathletes here in town. And, you know, I've I don't remember how many years it went off, but uh, it certainly was successful at bringing people into the sport. And, uh, and it would be neat to see, you know, more see initiatives again. like that. Yeah. But that's neat that now you're the role model and you're, you're bringing people into the sport. So how soon after that first one did you sign up for, for the next one? Um, I did the, the, I was signed up for the Olympic for the next year because it was part of the five-year plan. Um, and I signed up for Las Vegas Tri. Uh -huh. And then I, I went in for a physical every year and I went from like an old doctor who's just, you know, I loved him because I just saw oh, this is happening and that's happening. And he, oh, rub some dirt on it. You're fine. And I love that. And then I got this new doctor who's very, I'm sorry, what did you just say? And so he started sending me to all these specialists because um, I have a loss of hearing when I start overheating. And I had this like visual thing where my vision, I lost it for about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. one time during that year. And so I had mentioned it to him and um, he's like, you, I think you have MS. And so mm -hmm. he sent me to a neurologist and she said, yes, you've got MS. And I, while I was waiting for a second opinion, I was three weeks out from my Olympic. And I said, you know, if I have MS, because it's like a muscular thing. So like, if you're screaming downhill on a bike and your brain tells your hand to pull the brake and it doesn't happen, like that's game over. So I was like, okay, if I do have MS, I'm going to stop biking because the other two I can deal with. But um, so I decided, you know what, my dream is to do a half. So mm -hmm. let's just bump the Olympic to a half <laughs> and I'll just, I'll, I'll just do my best. And so I was trained for an Olympic and I went for the half. Um, oh, I see a pattern here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I ran out of water at mile 40. Cause uh -huh. I just, you know, I'd never 
really gone that far and I didn't know how much water to pack. And back in the day, they didn't really offer aid stations. You just had to bring it with you. They did have one at the halfway point, but I hadn't, I didn't top off and I had only finished some of my water and I didn't realize, well, the day is getting hotter. You're getting more thirsty. Yeah. So I went through a lot more. Yeah. Um, so by mile 40, I was completely dry. Like by 50, like my tongue kept sticking to my roof of my mouth because I had no saliva. <laughs> It was it was pretty bad. So I, oh, I'm still you still got me on the cliffhanger here. What happened with the diagnosis? Yeah, what, what about the MS? Um, I do not have it. I ended up going for a second opinion. I worked for doctors. Um, I, I worked for twelve neuro, neuro, uh, bleh, a nephrologist and endocrinologist back in the day, and and he, they gave me their best guy. And yeah. I went. He's like, darling, I've been doing this for forty years. You yeah. do not have MS. That's good. Well, so. you know, what a relief that is. But <laughs> yes, the stress well, that what you was been under between the time that, uh, you know, the first doctor said you have MS to where you didn't, that's stressful. And yeah. leading up to a race, you're already stressed out. That must have been a tough time. So Bob, what I have um, for the hearing loss is when um, I have allergies, uh, your nasal passages and the stuff that's supposed to drain, um, when you get overheated, all your stuff swells. So it doesn't have a chance to drain so that's why I just get fluid in my ears and it cuts off. And so the, my ENT figured that out. And then the visual disturbance was called an ocular headache. And so I just had, I guess you get a headache right behind your eyes. And so it just, it, so it was really weird, but nothing was really wrong. Just quirks. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, so, good, to, good to have checked out. And I think that's a, that's a good message is don't ignore those things and have them checked out. But Second opinions are, are yeah. really important. Yeah. So on the run of this half, uh, you had to go to the tunnels. Mm. And so I, I threw some water back and stuff. But um, by the time I got to their, their far aid stations, volunteers were gone. Water was gone. Bees were just going over this undiluted Gatorade. This was back before BBSC was bought in 2012. So yeah. don't 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 think it bad about BBSC. Yeah. So I I chugged this stuff and it it felt like somebody punched me in the gut, but I did feel yeah. better. Yeah. And then there was this woman that I had just been talking with back and forth, and we've been cheering each other on. And she came from like Minnesota or somewhere colder. So. Um, I get to this spot where my husband's spectating and waiting for me and she passes out. Mm. And I'm not a person who can just watch somebody, you know, with a medical emergency. So I look and I see a ranger's about a, a mile off my course. And I look and I'm like, oh gosh, I'm like, I'm so tired, but I gotta go get this woman some help. My husband, he, he's like, I know what you're thinking. He's like, you go, I will take care of it. Oh. So I started running again and then I went to hit the finish line and I realized that when I had stripped my wetsuit off, it, it took my chip off. Mm. It just slid right off my ankle. And no. so the race director told us, if you do not have your chip, you are disqualified. And so I ugly cried at the finish line. Oh, this is my only shot. You know, I have my watch. It has everything. I didn't cheat, I swear. And I'm like, 7, 7.31.31 was my time. So I'm like, I did not cheat. Like, That's that, awesome. that was rough. And so he's like, it's okay. It's okay. You just won't have your splits, but I got your finish time. You're fine. And so, so thankfully he was, he was kind and compassionate. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's but that 731 added included a, a two mile trip to get the uh I didn't have range. to go my husband took care of it oh he did he told he, he told me to keep on running and, yeah. and you'll be fine okay. and then I did a silver man to kind of redeem myself and I did it I you know it was a harder course and I did a, an hour better actually trained for it oh, so wow. that's wow. what the difference is <laughs> Well, you know what I what I love about these stories that you that you've told just now is it's all about solving problems, and you know you are a problem solver in race and yeah. a planner ahead of time. And even even with the extensive planning that I know you do, you still run into problems, and you need to. Oh, yeah. adapt. And that's such a great, you know, thing for people to hear. I, that's what I, I think we're all born that way, and that's what draws us to triathlon is we like to problem solve. You know, that is a, that's us. an amazing message. I mean, 
I hadn't even thought of that, you know, very much myself. I know little things come up, but you're talking about, you know, the wheels coming off and you putting them back on when, in the middle of a race, you know, so that's, that's really impressive. Um, so, you know, like, like I said, that's a, that's a good message for everybody. Yeah. So that's, that's humble beginnings with your, your racing, but you, you progressed to national champion two time, which is just, you know, phenomenal. Um, I'm, I'm curious, as you look back on your career, what, what would you say is your, your proudest moment that you've had? I'm the type of person that I don't, you know what I mean? Like I don't pat myself on the back. I don't. So I, I enjoy, um, the camaraderie and the being there with my best friend and cheering her on. And, um, so I, I just done a lot of cool things. I can't, I, I don't necessarily know that I'm, I'm proudest of one achievement. I actually, um, I just read this book on, um, successful people and the habits that they have. And they challenged us in one of these chapters to write our own like eulogy mm. and to make sure that the things that you're doing are, you know, what your priorities and what you actually want people to remember about you. Yeah. And so I wrote all these things about myself, like what I want my family to remember, what I want my friends to remember, what I want, you know, people who've worked with me to remember. And I looked back and I'm like, you know what? I didn't mention one single race. I didn't mention one single time, you know, like wow. race time. Or I just said, like, I want them to remember how much we laugh and all the beautiful things we saw. And so that's kind of how I process success in my mind. That, so. that is, that's awesome. And, and, I, and I know, you know, you do a wide variety of things, not just triathlon. I mean, you, you did your, your, uh, your peak this, uh, this last year. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to talk a little bit about that as a, a, that was a huge accomplishment. <laughs> well, COVID hit and, you know, obviously triathlons and stuff were frowned upon, but hiking was not frowned upon. So I decided I was going to do the Las Vegas Mountaineer Club's 50 Peaks and they're really challenging. <laughs> and some of it's just the driving part that's really hard, not necessarily the climbing of the peak. But um, I decided I was gonna do it in a year and my aunt cautioned me like with weather that may not be achievable. So I said, okay, I'll do a year and a half. So I'm on 29 right now and I'm trying to get 50 by, I'm hoping October this year. And so we had epic October for the tri club and I'm like, you know what? I'm only at 20. Let's see. I was, I decided to do 25 in October and I really had to hustle and <laughs> made it. <laughs> but yeah, it was, and friends were just like, I cannot believe you did that many, yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to get half my list done by October. Now, while we're on the topic of some, some pretty stellar accomplishments, most people don't realize what you did last weekend. <laughs> How about please tell us about this? This I, I this just blew my mind. <laughs> okay, what, so go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I uh, I have a lot of cool friends who have a lot of big dreams, and I like to help my friends achieve their dreams. So my friend wanted to do fifty miles for her fiftieth birthday, and now she. This is Make sure you make everyone knows <laughs> this is running. This is not a bicycle ride. We're, yeah, we're talking is, an ultra. So this is a 50 mile ultra, which is uh, running. And so I had only done um, the Grand Canyon, with, but which was about 20 miles uh, previous. And so I thought, eh, I mean, the, the train's pretty tough for the, so I'm good for about 30. And I kept asking her, I said, hey, I really need you to check what they're going to allow pacers, which are just basically your friends or whatever who can come and make sure that you're, you're staying on your target times and, and the wheels aren't coming off the bus. Mm -hmm. And she, she told me eight days before, um, you can't be out there till like the last lap. And I was like, she's going to talk herself out of this race. Mm -hmm. So I need, the only way I... Uh -oh. myself I'm like I can do 30 miles but what if I can't do the rest and, but I'm like you know what I 
I'm going to do it. And I just, I cannot have a DNF on my, <laughs> so I'm in it. I'm in it for the 50. I'm going to do or die. So we went out there and one mile at a time, we got it done. That is and, and so everyone knows you, you were planning on just helping her for a couple of laps yeah. and pacing her and helping her, helping her keep, stay motivated and at the right pace. And without the kind of training that it should take to do an ultra, you did an ultra. Yeah, I, I, I mean, was I was shocked I had like, a fifty mile in my back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't even, you, you even seem to realize how amazing this is. <laughs> that's what's funny. Yeah, but, but Bob, you don't know she's done a hundred mile or two. So I mean, this is you're talking to someone who just has this in her backbone to uh, uh, okay do these endurance <laughs> events. It's amazing. That that is amazing. That's, that's my, my goal for fitness. I want when somebody calls and says, there's this really cool thing available this weekend, let's go. I'm like, Ready I'm packing go. my bags, let's go. <laughs> okay. All right. So well, I'm going to keep that in mind whenever I want to do something. I'm going to say, you're, 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 you're my wingman. <laughs> okay, <right>? you got <laughs> it. <laughs> well, here's the deal is uh, we said we'd keep you for about 30 minutes and that time just flies by. Yeah, it and, does. And uh, Shauna, you have so many great stories and such a great perspective on endurance, you know, events in general and the endurance community. And I really like what you said about, you know, writing your own eulogy and, you know, you're, you're a triathlete, but you're not, that, that's not what defines you. You know, you are a caring person and, and encouraging of others uh, and kind, and, and that's what you are. And that's what, you know, is, people respect uh, about you and and it is so neat to see you doing all these different types of events and bringing people along with you or you know <laughs> helping to support others so and you're a role model for women in triathlon or women in multi-sport and you know it's it, I know that's a, a lot of weight on your shoulders but uh, you you embrace it and you're really a strength for uh, for the community so thanks for everything you're doing oh thank yeah. you John that's sweet one of the things I want to add on to that, Shauna, is um, you know, good people live good lives, and great people help others do it. And you, you're a great person Aww. because you help other other people really, you know, get into triathlon, do triathlons, and uh, become more than what they are before they met you. So Aww. you know, it's like I said, you're you're a great person. Thank you, Bob. Well, and you're you're humble, and not not to just you know, you know, I, I would really like that story that Bob said in the beginning where you you do go that extra effort and no one knows all the things that you do, do. that's right and uh and so again it is a huge thank you uh there's a lot of us have benefited from the effort that you you put in over the years so oh, it's been thank good you, to John. Have you and, and you've done a great job with the club since i handed it over to you so i'm i'm so grateful to see it in good hands well, we, we all enjoy triathlon and, uh, and it's, it's a community and we have a wonderful community here. Yes, we uh, do. I, just, a, you know, I've, I've lived and raced a lot of different places. This is just a fantastic community of people who race and, and, and everyone is so supportive. It really is uh, a fabulous place. So I brag on it all the time. So, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much. And thanks everyone for who's, uh, who was logging on and watching this and, and uh, really appreciate it. Good night, everybody. <laughs>